السلام عليكم يشرف نبدا ان شاء الله second session in this elegant meeting مع الدكتور ناجي عبد الهادي منصور يونيفرستي دكتور اسامه المنشاوي الجميل العزيز الفيرست اول يعني الحقيقه كل مره الميتنج بتاع الجمعيه التنظيم بتاعه بيبهرنا جميعا شكر للاستاذ الدكتور هاني حافظ الاستاذ الدكتور اميه حساب الله دكتور ايمن الرفاعي وجميع البانل المسؤولين عن الجمعيه اول سيشن اول لقاء ان شاء الله عندنا في الميتنج النهارده شرفني اقدم الدكتوره رشا سمير مدرس امراض الكلى لكتشر بفرولجي ان منصوره يونيفرستي رشا اند هير كوليجز هاف بين اكسبيرينسد ا فيري انتريستينج توبيك ديورينج ذا براكتس and the research uh, in women with kidney disease, especially women, pregnant women. And they uh, introduced uh, a new type of, uh, of service, uh, which is novel in Mansoura. And uh, she will start to introduce it to us, actually. Uh, Dr. Rasha, please. Uh, I feel honored to be getting, given the opportunity to uh, stand here and I wish to thank Professor Maya Hassabal and Professor Ayman Rafai for um, their support for, of our little project and I wish to thank my professors and my colleagues who are always supportive and uh, sincerely helpful for me. I'm going to present Mansoura experience regarding women nephrology. Uh, of course women throughout their life stages need special care especially if when getting pregnant and of course when diseased. Obstetric nephrology was first considered as exceptional medicine, which means exceptional branch of a complex, um, fascinating branch of medicine. As for the world experience, the 0 by 25 global snapshot which is a multinational cross-sectional study about the epidemiology of acute kidney injury in low-income countries. Pregnancy-related EKI was among the commonest causes of acute kidney injury in these countries. About 800 women die every day from causes related to pregnancy and the childbirth, and almost most of these causes are preventable. This ugly trend is not registered not, or, and are largely underreported in Africa and Middle East. Few reports are only available from um, uh, Africa. As we can see, from 54 countries, we can see uh, published data uh, from only six countries on international uh, databases. And even those countries represented, the number of studies can be counted on the fingers of one hand. The World Health Organization reported significantly higher maternal mortalities in developing countries compared to developed world. And according to Women Aid International, the probability that a pregnant African woman die from pregnancy-related complication is as high as 1 per 20 in sharp contrast with 1 per 2,000 in developed world. These women are not only economically disempowered, they are socially and educationally disempowered as well, which makes them unable to make their informed healthy choices. Our past experience was not so different from that. When we first studied the characteristics of women presented with pregnancy-related acute kidney injury to Mansoura, and found that maternal mortality represented 22.5% of these women. These women almost represented in the third trimester or piperium with severe preeclampsia, obstetric hemorrhage, septic complications, and surgical complications related to cesarean section. And not only maternal mortality was high, but also intrauterine fetal death was, re was reported in 45% of these women, and preterm deliveries were reported in 15%. This pierced us to stop and think 
this is time for action or time for change. And here I'd like to thank our great professor, Hussein Shaisha, who advocated the establishment of Mansoura Obstetric Nephrology Service in 2020. As a death of women during pregnancy or delivery on a soon after is a tragedy for her family and for society as a whole. We established the Mansoura Obstetric Nephrology Service, which constituted our present experience. This service aimed to improving the quality of care offered for patients at risk for pregnancy-related acute kidney injury and for women with chronic kidney disease. Patients were stratified according to their maternal and fetal risk into low, medium to high and very high risk. Low-risk low patients received a bi-monthly visit, medium to high attended one to two weekly visits, and very high-risk patients were admitted to maternal care unit admission. Um, all patients uh, received routine nephrological care as well as fetal biometry and fetal doubler according to the risk stratification. Four-dimensional fetal imaging is indicated in selected cases. One of these cases, a patient who received six pulses of intravenous cyclophosphamide for lobus nephritis uh, during her, the first trimester of her pregnancy because she didn't know she's pregnant. And fortunately, the pregnancy passed uncomplicated and the, this woman had normal full-term labor. On the other hand, we have reported um, fetal proximal and distal limb anomalies not previously reported in literature in women exposed to mycophenolate mofetil during pregnancy. This service was giving us learning, uh, educational uh, lessons every day. One of these cases is this patient who presented with postpartum thrombotic microangiopathy and was inserted femoral catheter for the purpose of hemodialysis. This catheter, uh, after which the patient developed the hemobritoneum and surgical exploration revealed the femoral catheter passing inside one of the ovarian varicose veins. So we could get recommendations that femoral venous castration should be avoided in pregnant and postpartum women because these very cause veins are common in the context of pregnancy and piperium. We used to see rare cases added in the past, and we had an opportunity to perform uh, re or to do research <coughs> in areas not endorsed in research, in literature. But the important question was, was it fruitful to implement this service model? This table compares women who received the Mansour Obstetric Nephrology Service versus those revealed conventionally treated or a conventional service. Despite most of our patients were CKD patients, 60.5 were CKD and they had greater risk. Not only CKD, but more patients had hypertensive disorder of pregnancy and obstructive nephropathy. These were their, our outcomes. The group who were monitored or received the MON service are represented in blue. The patients who are conventionally treated represented in orange, and our historic published group represented in gray. No reported maternal mortalities in our group compared to 11.8 and 22.5 in the two groups. No reported fetal mortalities compared to 51.5 and 45 in those not attending the service. But here we have to admit that we had two neonatal mortalities, 35 days and 40 days after delivery due to development of sepsis complication in two rural neonatal care units. Despite our patients have greater risk and 60% of them were CKD patients, only 3% of them progressed into CKD compared to 37.5 and 13.2 in the two patients which were primarily KI patients. These results were comparable to a previously published uh, study uh, from a joint renal and obstetric service at UK, included 50 patients over five years and had two fetal um, poor outcomes. So it means that the establishment of obstetric nephrology service provides an opportunity to improve maternal and fetal outcomes in patients with kidney disease. We're going to start implementing the Mansoura Vigilance Program which targeting the obstetrician to emphasize the risk factors for PRACI and um, promote the early referral of women at risk of PRACI. So accordingly, women at risk of pregnancy-related EKI should be referred early to obstetric nephrology service. And because most patients are present in the postpartum period and piperium, we have to emphasize the causes that lead to kidney failure postpartum, including I mean, uh, postpartum infection, postpartum hemorrhage, and postpartum TMA 
including all placenta-related and non-placenta-related causes. So, women who have risk factor for pregnancy-related acute kidney injury in puperium should also be referred early to maternal critical care units. An important message we have to deliver for obstetrician is that there is a risk for development of chronic kidney disease and end-stage kidney disease in patients who had previous history of hypertensive disorder of pregnancy, gestational hypertension, and preeclampsia. Women nephrology had another phase that is also neglected. The reproductive health or the menstrual health of women on hemodialysis. Nephrologists usually don't ask their hemodialysis patient in the child-bearing period uh, about their menstrual health, reproductive health, sex sexual dysfunction. So we conducted this national survey, which is, um, has been published a few weeks ago, about the uh, menstrual health, amenorrhea, BMS, and dysmenorrhea among women of reproductive age on hemodialysis in Egypt. We have found that 20% of the included women had premature cessation of menstruation below the age of 40, and 37 of those menstruating had significant menstrual irregularities. BMS was reported in 70%, while dysmenorrhea reported in 58% of menstruating women. And I'm sorry to say that 35% to 55% of two national surveys we have conducted, the women were illiterate, and 31 received below secondary education. So this map shows the gender difference in literacy in each country. And here is Egypt. Egypt sits at 132 out of 144 countries worldwide on the issue of gender equity, as fewer girls have an access for education compared to boys, an issue that indirectly impact their health choices and their health. In another national survey conducted by our team, comparing the outcome of pregnancies before and after hemodialysis in more than 100,000 women, you can find that the incidence of uh, the abortion, preterm labors, need for cesarean section, and low birth weight were significantly and strikingly higher after hemodialysis compared to before hemodialysis. This experience encourages us to set future goals. These future goals is to upgrade the practice of women nephrology through education, vigilance programs, training sessions, and research. And to ensure that women get the right service and support at the right time to help their recovery and prevent long-term complications by disseminating obstetric nephrology service everywhere in all government, governed rates. Empower women who experience a kidney disease to make informed choices, particularly with ethical concern regarding the termination of pregnancy and so support innovative programs and influence policies. And there is a need for aggressive public health initiatives to save maternal and fetal lives and to prevent mortality. And finally, advocate and lending a helping hand according to sustainable development goals pertaining to women's health in Africa and the Middle East. And in order to achieve these goals, we are here today for a call for implementation. Implementation of Egyptian Women Nephrology Working Group with the vision of a community where all women with kidney disease achieve the best possible health and well-being throughout their lives. And our mission is to promote women nephrology through raising awareness and understanding, providing and enhancing care and support for all affected and advancement of practice and research. We all need your helping hand to work together and to save maternal and fetal lives and in welcoming all the team members who are interested to join our group, and we hope this work to be continued and upgraded through the coming years, and thank you. Thank you, Russia, very much for your uh, elegant talk and good presentation that introduces what had happened in the last five years in Mansoor, actually, in, in this aspect. Uh, uh, it, it was a tragedy, actually, when we came across our data, when we started to work and found very high uh, incidence and prevalence of maternal and fetal mortality. And when we tried to publish this data internationally, we, we found a great criticism of uh, what, what, what's been there in Mansoor, and uh, I think in many parts in Egypt. And now the time has come to try to overcome this 
And it's only the dissociation between the obstetricians and the gynecologists and the nephrologists that created such a gap and induced such a tragedy. And I think the enthusiasm of Russia and her colleagues and their uh, uh, elegant work that paved the way for that. Uh, the floor is open for any discussion or comment or question. Right, if so, Russia, thank you. Dr. May. I, I just want to thank you, Russia, and the whole group for this initiative. Really, it's, it's very important that you focus the light on a subject that was that, very important, but still under-recognized. Uh, so, thank you very much. Thank you, Karmai. Thank you, Dr. Rasha. Now we'll move to the next speaker, Professor Yasser Abdul Hamid. Yes. Uh, 